A lot of frustrated people yes. looking at the glass. Yes. Sorry. What's sexy about that? Oh my god. Oh, a new fetish. Oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Quackcast. This is Quackcast number 349. I'm Ozone Ocean and with me is Tance and Baines. Hi, you people. Hello. 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 So we're going to be talking about the weather. Just like where you know, like small talk. Uh, you know, is, is it, what, how's the weather? Is it, it's not been really hot. You know, well, how? Whatever. No, no, no. That's not what we're going to talk about because I'm shit at small talk. So um, yeah, it's pretty good. I thought. <laughs> yeah. How how's the weather? Is it like um, cold? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Sparkling repartee there. Um, so weather can affect your mood, and because of that, it is a great way of communicating feeling in stories and, you know, uh, like uh, highlighting certain moments, not just having it as a backdrop, but actually affecting the like the direction of your story or highlighting certain actions that are happening, whatever. All sorts of amazing things you can do with weather that uh, a lot of people frequently ignore or just pass over. Or maybe, you know, you just tackle the, you know, the rain during a funeral and uh, nothing else. But uh, you can use weather in a lot of different ways. You can you can really take advantage of it. And that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get into that, I have to bring up the featured comic for the week. I featured The Frolic, which is um, an interesting new comic on Drunk Duck. So... I'm going to talk about that now. Hello, I'm Ozone Ocean, and my feature this week was The Frolic. Mr. Frolic is a detective with issues. He has dark looks, a long, dark coat, and he smokes as he pontificates and ruminates on love, life, and serial killers, much like Bill Hicks or Lenny Bruce, but a little more wry. His love life is seriously bad, and he doesn't get on with his a far more sensible partner at work as they try and solve the horrible murder case they're currently assigned. This is an introspective character-driven story with some drama and a dash of humour. The art is digital, featuring creative panelling and unified pleasing colour palette. It's just starting out, so give it a read. Uh, Warning, there is some nudity, because... Mr. Frolic's wife is um, a bit antagonistic towards him, shall we say, especially uh, as regards uh, her um, sexual partner, and that is shown. Um, This is a mature-rated comic, of course, not adult-rated, so you won't see anything too racy, but it is um, sort of bumping up against the limits there, so yeah, just be aware of that. It's a really cool comic. Um, It's an adult detective story really and not adult as in um a uh, sexual adult just a grown up uh, detective story shall we put it and it's you know, quite entertaining quite serious noir but neo noir i'd say because it's quite modern in its tone um a lot of times there's things like uh, song lyrics used to emphasize the mood of the character the mood of a scene which is uh, an interesting little effect, like the character's imagining song lyrics in his head as he's contemplating whatever uh, happen- is happening at the moment or is going through his head at the moment, which uh, sort of lends an interesting sort of uh, flavour over the scene. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing you'll expect from The Frolic. Uh, the Frolic, I'm not really sure why it's called that. The, the main character's name is uh, Frolic with a K, the comic's called The Frolic with a C, so like uh, The Frolic, The Dance. So we might s- sort of see uh, why, why it's titled that as we go on through the story. We might not, might be a mystery. Or, you know, you might just sort of have to make it up in your own head, The Frolic, The Dance. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, enjoy the comic. 
uh, by Paulie Blade, and it's rated M. Um, you might want to listen to the last Quackcast, uh, Quackcast number 348, I think, which had uh, the musical theme to The Frolic, I believe. It was either that or it was uh, the one before, <laughs> 347. Anyway, so uh, have a look, and if you want to hear the theme music to The Frolic, you can you can listen to that and uh, just read the comic. Have a have a little look and enjoy. Okay, so that's my bit. On with the quack cast. And that was the featured comic, The Frolic. The Frolic. It's actually named after this, um, you would think, oh, The Frolic, that must be about, you know, someone prancing about or dancing. So, no, frolicking. This, this yeah. guy is actually called uh, Frolic, that's his name. Frolic with a K, and the comic is Frolic with a C. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, it's, it's going on. <laughs> so, there's that. It's a good comic. Read it. I would have just reviewed it. So, you know, listen to that and heed my wise words and have a read of it. Next up, we have the featured music. This week, Gum Wallace has given us the theme to Swallow Vamps, which is a really weird name. Swallow Vamps. Like uh, vampire swallows, birds, or you know, something else about swallowing. I mean, I know sucker by is sort of known as being a... Um, well, there's con- connotations in their name. I won't go into that. Uh, anyway, so Swallow Vamps. This is a, a, a really cool comic. I actually wanted to feature it, but I discovered that Kaida Guxay had featured it already in 2015. So, bugger, she got there ahead of me by quite a long way. Um, yeah, so that was a problem. But anyway, so for Swallow Vamps, this is a jaunty Latin dance number Put on your best suit or evening dress and then salsa and swish around the dance floor to the spicy sound of trumpets, fast rhythm of percussion and the cool bell-like tones of a vibraphone. This number is hot, tight and tasty. So take it away, Gum Wallace, with Swallow Vamps. Swallow Vamps, which is a fascinating comic by Missimo, and it's rated T. Have a look at it. The artwork is amazing. It's very stylized, realistic. Beautiful colours too. Really well rendered. It reminds me of the artwork of of, um, Philippian Crusader. Very, very highly skilled. The fellow was, uh, Missimo was featured many years ago, I think, by School Monkey when he did Nuclear Neil. Uh, he's been on the duck a long, long time. Years and years. So, yeah, he's a impressive artist. Okay, so, the weather, Tarts. How is the weather in Greece at the moment? Uh, we have the heat waves upon heat waves and a ton of... Uh, Fire alerts and high risk of fire alerts all yeah. over the place happening. Um, so we are basically cooking very well. We are well done, and now we're going to be charred in a little bit. So. Oh, all right. Oh, boy. Burn. Well, I have experienced the weather in uh, Greece around exactly around this time of year. I know what it's like. It is incredibly hot. It's like Australian summer. It's... Uh, it's bad, people. It's hot. <laughs> it's, it's hard. You're in, in Athens especially when there's not often that much, you know, cooling breezes or anything. Because you're in a city and the buildings are not that high. They're sort of uniformly at, at a particular height, but there's canyons of them. And mm. it's it's very heavily urban city with narrow streets and stuff and that. Anyway, we're sidetracking here, but uh, so weather, this is your topic that you came up with for your Saturday news post, and not really talking about weather as, um, you know, just a backdrop, but weather as an active thing in the comic. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, uh, the idea was that um, the weather can be a medium to enhance the emotional tone or the atmosphere in your comic mm. uh, in an easy, quick telegraph sort of way. Uh, you can uh, set the mood very easily if your weather matches it, in a sense. Yeah. Or, or if the weather absolutely directly contradicts it. That's also something that can work very well. If you have sad torrential funeral rains, but everyone is hilarious in it and is dancing, or is uh, sort of uh, having the time of their lives, this again brings up in high relief how happy the person is, so much so that the weather cannot bring them down. Yeah. Yes. Like uh, you had the gif of uh, um, singing in the rain, Gene Kelly dancing in the rain, and you think, yeah, well, that's an automatic um, contradiction there. We have that uh, bit of a frizzen there because rain is meant to make you down, but yeah, like you say, it could not. That's in the song, people. Listen to the song. <laughs> I can't remember what the song was. Singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. <laughs> well, I've only ever on. used it in my comic for like visual, strictly visual effect of actually, although I like what you're saying makes total sense and it's like, well, yeah, of course like mm -hmm. I've only ever used it for like, oh, I want the shadows to look cool on this page or like I'm shading and it just randomly happens, I'm like, okay, it's a little darker mm -hmm. must be near sunset but I've never, like I think it makes way more sense to give it a little more thought than to uh, use it to give a subtle, like to give atmosphere and to give that emotional tone, whether you're working with it or, like you said, working against it, um, they definitely should be there. I don't think I've ever done it. Like, oh. uh, Oz can take that clip, that audio clip, use it somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Why can't I talk? going on you going uh, no i don't think i've ever like purposely used the weather to uh, bolster the tone you know? okay um, yeah but i want so, uh, i think that um okay i i like planning stuff but sometimes it might still happen organically like you described doesn't mean that you have to micromanage every part of the process in advance in order to do it or you know having it be legit in a sense um, often, um, sorry about this, it, it's going to go away very quickly. <laughs> um, so often it's going to be um, organic in the sense that you will need it as a creator. You will like it. It will feel more complete or more um, nice. efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember... I said also to the uh, during the video that um, I'm very guilty of the the rain reflects the grief part of uh, the character, and then I actually hadn't planned for it to be raining. Uh, but when I started drawing the background of the, I think that is the opening page of uh, chapter five uh, in Without Moonlight. You have the very same street that uh, Martha with Basil had gone down on the last scene where he was alive, spoilers. Uh, it's been two years, almost a year or something. I don't know. It's been a very long time. Uh, so anyway, so they were they went down that road uh, trying to go to the rendezvous point and everything that happened there. Uh, then on the opening of the next after you have her on her own walking down the street, very same street. It is now also devoid of people, everything else. Um, and it just felt that it needed rain, and it needed that particular rain that if you ever find yourself in Greece around November, uh, that is a horrid rain because it's very cold, 
The it's cold, like a, the cold November rain. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, the thing is that it is in contrast a little bit with the, the, the atmosphere. Usually it is a good 10 degrees colder than whatever cold you have during November. Like it could be like fall, the atmosphere and uh, the temperature. And then you have this rain that freezes everything. So that was the rain I was going for. Ah. So, and now we know what soundtrack that particular scene has. Guns and Roses. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. I love that. Yeah, so yeah, you really did need that contrast because yeah, it was a happy scene, especially with the basil and um you know, Hotos and Martha. They were like a family. It was beautiful, and then you dashed it all away from us, and that really highlights the emotional tone and the the desolation that the character feels. For my comic, I've when I've used weather, most of the time I've had it as an you know an environmental effect, um, which it literally is. But I've had it as an environmental effect um, for the comic, you know, like a um, uh, it it affects what the characters are doing and it affects the, the what is going to happen in the story. It's like a significant thing. Um, there has been like a sandstorm in Pintia and that and it had a very like a that actually directed the plot of the story and then there was um, like a, in other parts of the comic there was wind blowing and uh, a, um, like a little whirlwind and that affects like a particular direction of the story that is very um, um, directs mm -hmm. the events and the plot so Weather can be used in those kind of ways as well, you know, your, your emotional tones. And um, like I've, say in like chapter six of Pinky Day, the main thing there, I, I did have a big sandstorm and that like is a thing. And But there's also heat and that affected the characters in a lot of different yeah. ways. And, you know, that made them angry and depressed and... Um, very irritable. Very irritable, yes. Exactly. Hard on poor Betty. Yes. For stinky. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> that, that was my own experience of weather. So I was trying to put, uh, you know, what I knew, writing what I knew about um, my experience of being incredible heat. So, yeah, I, mm -hmm. rather than emphasizing or telegraphing the feelings of the characters. So that was my particular use of it. Or, or it could just set um, the mood in the sense that I'm thinking, for example, a very good way to, to give an auditory sense things is, again, the weather. And not only the presence of sound, which could be like, you know, the sound of the sheets of rain, uh, which is, you know, rain is the go-to thing often. Mm -hmm. uh, but, for example, if you have snow and the snow is falling very gently and... Uh, the the ground is powder, snow everywhere. It gives the feeling of silence, absolute silence. Nothing is being disturbed for whatever purpose you might want it. It could be very romantic. It could be a horror movie. It could be uh, someone being utterly alone and everything is quiet around. There is not a soul around. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, that can have quite an effect on, on that kind of thing. Yeah, the eeriness, of the silence. That's like uh, we we have our, our Baines here, who is uh, an expert on all things snow, I would imagine. But we, we have there's a lot of movies from Canada that have the weather as a character, and especially the ice and the snow, and you do really do have that. You know, everything blanketed in white and just that silence and bleakness that that gives which is very effective it's quite beautiful in in a lot of ways as well have you noticed that in a lot of yeah. canadian movies and tv shows and stuff they use it as oh a... absolutely yeah and not just canadian movies but movies that feel very canadian because of that yeah um, okay definitely. yeah it's very effective but i actually did an issue of my own comic too um, and i just did it in snow because i wanted the texture i wanted to draw snowflakes in every outdoor scene and it, it you know it took a couple of months to do the issue 
and uh, I was tired of doing snow. Like every time the characters went outside, I was like, oh, God, why did I do this? Now I have to draw, yeah. draw everybody's winter jackets again. I have to draw the snow again. It's like, what was I thinking? But uh, it did. It worked, though, in the way that Tense is saying. Like it sort of had this had this nice vibe of silence and it was, it was different, you know. So it's kind of that's what I wanted. Like it was, I think, like you said, I was like, it was winter here at the time. So I wanted to sort of have that. I yeah. think it, maybe it wasn't winter here, but I was thinking about it anyway, and I wanted to have the that in the comic, mm-hmm. but it's not really part of the plot. It's not a Christmas story. It's not anything like that. It's just yeah. there it's as a visual mm-hmm. interest. Channeling uh, I like the look of it. Oh, Get that yeah. depth, drawing those flakes, out of focus snowflakes and stuff. It looked, looked good. Yeah, the also, three-dimensionality. It's, it's a lovely effect. Yeah. And another thing would be similar, but with a different sort of twist or texture, quote-unquote, let's say, in it would be, and I'm listening to it right now, that's why I'm saying it, um, when you have the extreme heat that people cannot actually be outside for too long, so everyone is cooped up in their houses, so if you are outside, you there is again this uh, silence, but it is, it is interrupted only by the cicadas. And, and that is the only sound that is out there. So that can also have an effect. I don't know if you can hear it. No. Because I right being up. very loud. Your microphone um, doesn't pick it up, but I know the experience. Well, we all and, do. Yeah, I mean, if you are of those unfortunate people that cannot sleep if the cicadas are, are going, you are going to have a... a Big tough time in Greece at this point in uh, in the year because uh, they don't stop. They don't even stop at night where they're supposed to. The temperature is so high that um, they cannot stop. It's hot at night. I can tell you, people. I was there last year at this time, and you go, you go out at like two o'clock in the morning to buy an ice cream because you'd be so. Actually, weirdly, now you're talking about cicadas, um, when I was staying there, I was like in this place that was sort of, um, you know, fairly close to the Acropolis Mount, so you, it was like, it's very hilly and, um, yeah, there's a bit of an elevation there, which meant that where I was staying was, um, a, the building was mostly underground, the room, even though it was like, the other side of the building was open, and it was like a story above the ground most of it was like built into maybe the side of a hill or something like that which meant it was incredibly silent i'd close the door and wouldn't be able to hear anything but i had to have the place closed most of the time because it was so hot so i had to have the air conditioner on and all the doors and it was so depressing being in there because there was no sound and just felt so isolated so yeah that was a weird experience and i didn't get to hear the cicadas because <laughs> Well, um, don't hear the cicadas where you were often. Yeah. Uh, you have to go near the Acropolis, where there are trees. Otherwise, you won't hear them. You get to hear. They, they are literally in the trees. So, but over here in the suburb, where we are surrounded by trees, we have a symphony of them. Yeah. And... They they stop. They, they, you can understand the temperature dropping a little bit uh, at around four a.m. But then they start up at uh, four thirty, something oh, like that. <laughs> I like them. I uh, they allow me to sleep. They're very relaxing. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can get used to that effect, but it's hard to render in a comic. That kind of stuff. I mean, you've got to have like faded out sound effects so it's not like to the floor. It's like just in as a background noise. But yeah, you can indicate that stuff. It's a very popular effect in Japanese uh, anime. Well, Japanese animation, whatever you want to call it. They always have that to indicate some other sound of the cicadas because, I mean, over there it, it's a different thing again because they have like gigantic cicadas. Monster creatures who are incredibly loud. 
so yeah, it's a it's another uh, equation altogether in that part of the world. Bizarrely, that is a is a great summer effect. The cicada. So look, we've got heat, we've got summer, we've got winter. So rain and snow. Uh, spring and autumn, they're not as well. Actually, autumn we that is a that is a particular thing because people will indicate that with fallen leaves, and fallen leaves are great for showing wind, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. Yeah. How else do you show wind? By In spring, you show wind by blossoms falling from the trees. Yeah. Especially again, Japan is a pioneer in this. Um, so you can't get to show wind by having romantic stuff fly in the air. The cherry blossoms. Uh, yes, cherry blossoms especially. Uh, but you can also have the people, the way, for example, a character would walk if they had to push against very, very strong wind. Leaning against Some. wind, yeah. Yeah. That's a good effect. Then, even if they were naked and bald, you would again be able to show wind. Yeah. No. You don't have to show the, the, the big coat <laughs> billowing and the hair flapping in the wind. Yeah. Like, but that is a good effect, though. I mean, that's yes. for dramatic effect. The hair and the coat billowing in the wind. I love it. Yeah, I that, that could be like, color. you know, or for a dramatic uh, farewell. Like I said in the in the article, like you can use wind to make something look amazing, even though it's not actually as amazing as yeah. you're selling. <laughs> That's right. Exactly, making yeah that that coat fly in the wind and that hair. Oh my god, it it's it's a dramatic thing, but it makes the character look heroic. Or mm. almost always, you look heroic if you've got your or, or very sinister. You can you can you know, your... sell the whole bat style. Okay. Yeah, you've got your coat flapping like a, the wings of a raven or something like that. That's so, mm -hmm. that can be effective. But yeah, I mean the like the the rough hair being blown in the wind is one of the that's even more like iconic than the flapping cloak or coat. Because that was that's always used. That's used in ancient sculpture and things like that. That indicates a heroic character for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, it just because it's because it frames the it frames the the eyes very well. Often oh, okay. you have you have the the hair just fly in front of the eyes, and of course the character can't see anything, but it looks very cool. <laughs> so ah, uh, there's that. <laughs> Um, and and wind can also telegraph loss. For example, if the wind blows very suddenly and and sweeps away something that is important to the character, and it can be just lost in the sky or something, okay. you know, whatever direction the wind blows, and, and they cannot retrieve it. This would be a symbol of whatever loss the character is suffering. Yes, exactly. the wind is often depicted as being almost sentient or like almost, uh, what is that thing? A Ducey Ex Machina, sort of. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't actually direct the plot, but, uh, you know, it um, it does something that's magical in that it might yeah. reveal a page in a book that you need to see or, yeah, it might steal away yeah, something you need. And you absolutely, know. absolutely. Uh, or, or, or it might actually be your antagonist, and you might lose something that you would need to advance the plot. Now you have to go find it again, or, or whatever. Or it might uh, get you to taste the thing, and then you find something else. Well, it's easy, uh, something. <laughs> exactly. <You'll, laughs> it's your, your character will bump into another character, and Oh, mm -hmm. that's going to advance my plot. Now I've got my two characters to meet. I was wondering how I was going to do that. The wind. Yeah. <laughs> or you could subvert it and, and just have them bump into each other and then just uh, carry on. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a good effect. Yeah, you can think, oh, this, the story is going to converge finally. The two streams. Oh, bastard, you didn't do it. Do that. Oh, well. So yeah, wind is is a great little effect. I've used it as um well in in one of my chapters it's wind is the main uh driver in that particular one because I've got it like flinging a rocket in and you know character using wind effects uh to attack her um her opponent and uh in another one yeah it's a uh, there's they're having a like a fight in these mecha in these narrow um like a gully or something like that and there's rocks and the mecha are hiding and this uh, whirlwind comes shooting down one of the alleyways between the rock you know as wind does and it can like one of the characters thinks ah oh, that's that's the mecha coming you know and it's like one of those false you know jump scare kind of things so I was using the wind in that kind of way. It's a good thing to do. You can you can really use the yeah. weather and all the. Speaking of, from another to mention it. Uh, another thing I really like. I don't have opportunities to use it. But I really like it. I would love to be able to use it at some point. Is when the weather is so intense that it actually frightens the character. Oh, like um, right, yeah. mm-hmm. the storm is extremely violent and. They genuinely fear the storm itself. Like the the, the plot pauses because the weather is so cold, in a sense. Yeah. Um, like a, a, a hurricane, you know, a cyclone, typhoon, that kind of thing. It's a, mm-hmm. very effective. There's. It can be used to highlight, like, uh, okay, these are the problems of the humans, but then nature, you know. As Nox, you know, guys, you shouldn't be uh, worried that much about this thing. You know, I'm here. Yeah, bigger problem. <laughs> <That's also> the... <laughs> yeah. Oh, very true. And there's a lot of, um, I don't know many comics of it, but I imagine there are some. But there's a lot of good movies and TV shows that uh, use the weather in that way. And it's usually used mm-hmm. in like, um, often like TV series and sitcoms and that kind of thing. Or... Uh, uh, one one of the key things you use a storm for is uh, isolating your characters in a uh, small, like environment, and they're often the weather's um you know the thing that you have to fight against and protect yourself against, almost like the birds in that movie. So you can't let it get in. You have to, and you're trapped in this little house all together, and you can't go out. And you've got all that kind of Make dramatic sure tension. Make the characterization like you can. You can push your characters to reactions and and even the extreme that they wouldn't normally display. Mm. Yeah. Same well. Force them, yeah. Force them together. Force them into alliances with each other and against each other and all that kind of stuff. The the kind of stuff you can do because they're you know, stuck in a small space. You can't get out because of the floodwaters, and, and the rain. Even be extremely perfect. Not pervasive, like succinct, let's say. Uh, if I pronounce that right, that, um, I have only read the word. So. Um, but uh, the, the, to have, for example, two enemies being cornered into this uh, extreme weather situation and they still remain enemies. Like they, they still go at each other, even though the earth is having a meltdown <laughs> or, uh, because that again underlines just how intense their their hatred or their anger or whatever it is that is motivated them to be against each other um, is going it, it's bigger than this big light show yeah. whatever it is the weather is putting up again that is very very intense Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That can be a very strong thing. It mirrors their behavior and, yeah, they um, contrast against it and shows that they are bigger than even the storm, their antipathy towards each other. Mm-hmm. They, 
uh, Zeus and whoever else having a fight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely like how people react to it is, is huge. Yeah, that's when you're bringing it more into the forefront of mm-hmm. actually affecting characters or not affecting them. Actually, that's really cool, yeah. People ignore the hurricane because of their hatred for each other. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's I would bigger than this. That. I, I, now I'm tempted to see if I can sort of put that in in, in some yeah. fashion. Well, the thing about weather is that, you know, even though some weather doesn't work in some places, um, storms usually work in most most places. And, like, weather is universal. You can always find a place for it to work. I mean, as I say, some weather is just appropriate for some regions. And, like, uh, you're not going to do, like, a snowy blizzard in most desert situations. You can. But you got to be careful. You don't want to mess up the whole suspension of disbelief. You're not going to be uh, doing rainstorms in, in a desert, usually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you've got to find the right right things for the right uh, situation. But because of that, it's very effective because, like, uh, so the current story of Pinky TA is happening in a kind of very snowy region, so I can do snowfalls and stuff like that, and it fits with the region because when you see those, you think, oh yeah, that's a natural thing to happen. So yeah, that's a, it's a fully fits within it. Um, your streets of Athens, so a big rainstorm there, that kind of you know fits. If you're doing it like seasonally, then yeah, snow and all that kind of stuff is going to fit very naturally, and it's going to um, number one, it's going to highlight what the season is, isn't it? It's a very, mm-hmm. very good indicator of that. So, yeah, if a story was set in Australia, it would be very um, awkward to have a, a blizzard or something like that because we don't have blizzards in this country, maybe on the top of mountains and things like that. But yeah. just same here, yeah. blizzards are there, they happen, they happen every few years or even even longer time in between. They are highlights, like you remember them afterwards. Okay. The blizzard that year or so on and so forth. Um but however another thing uh, I wanted to mention is that you can use weather to highlight things that wouldn't be otherwise easily discernible about characters. Uh, that doesn't have don't have to do necessarily with their emotional reputation. Uh, for example, one of the reasons it's not the only reason, but uh, it's a happy coincidence, <laughs> a convenience. Yeah. Goal. Um, another reason that uh, it's going to be very convenient for me to have photos go up in the mountains where the resistance is. Is because the weather is going to be much colder faster. Because actual winter proper in Greece is January and February. Mm. That's where we get the brand of our cold. December isn't really all, all that cold for Greece. Yes. It's cold, this is cold, but something that you can deal with with a cold. Um, not extra layers and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, January is a different situation and February even worse. So I, I cannot wait that long to show the, the different constitution that Fotis is going to have after post his torture. Oh. Because he has suffered something very chronic that will not go away. And I need the cold to display this as quickly as possible. So going up into the mountains where the weather is going to be more appropriately winter, you know, snow, winds, all that all that kind of thing, all that kind of stuff, uh, is going to help me demonstrate oh. the last That's torture. another thing. You're gonna to torture him in the worst environment you can you can put him in. For I'm not gonna torture him because he will have to <laughs> Okay, come on. So I'm going to go to 
a thing. Extra thing. Because another thing, and this is an aside, uh, an off topic, but another thing I really don't like uh, see in uh, movies and stuff is that the character goes through this huge trauma, physical trauma. Let's set aside the psychological one. And, and then after they take off the bandages, it's like it never happened. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> So, I want to display that, that these consequences have lasting. They don't just hold for the month or something and then you are, you know, right as a rain. <laughs> right as a rain. Go on topic. Well, that's one thing about um, uh, weather problems. Often, you know, we'll show like a huge storm, a big weather thing, and then it blows away and it's, oh, beautiful, sparkling. Lovely and fresh, even though, you know, the weather's just gone. So that's what they do. But, you know, maybe sometimes your weather has left a lasting effect. It's washed mm-hmm. away someone's house or it's destroyed yeah. a, a building or whatever. It's killed someone. That can happen as well. Mm-hmm. Trees fallen over and uh, killed a character. Exactly. Like, I think even recently, if I'm not mistaken, we had the casualty like this. In the summer, we had such... Island winds, but a couple of trees uh, fell, and unfortunately, they smashed uh, a car and people that were in there. Wow, died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that does happen. I, I think I heard about that. Um, strong winds are damn dangerous, and well, that's an interesting thing you can stick in your comic, although it that would be an, an unusual occurrence because people aren't readers wouldn't really be expecting that so that could be a, a good that's thing. how my my top uh, Nazi villain dies it falls on you <laughs> <laughs> and, and then a nun villain a stray piano just blows on and lands on his head <laughs> as happens and a safe <laughs> <laughs> just to be sure so in the like way of uh, the nuts and bolts of doing a, a comic, let's stick to comics for a sec, and how you express this. So it can be something, like it can be an actual event, it's a weather report, or characters talk about it, or it's the consequence, like someone died by a falling tree in a storm or something like that. But how, like what are the good ways, so that's one, other good ways to sort of express that, you know. I mean, I, when you talk about it, I picture like a silent panel, establishing shot of mm. weather, you know, whether it's like whipping trees or, mm. you know, a wider shot with characters buffeted by wind or rain. Um, but a, like a silent, you know, panel that really establishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Or if I'm going to have the weather be extremely important in my plot for some reason, like someone dies because of this weather or or something game-changing happens, I would have it sadly up on the audience in the sense like, uh, first it becomes uh, cloudy in the background as the, as the characters are talking or doing whatever it is they're doing. Then the clouds become darker progressively and you don't necessarily need to notice as you go from yeah. panel to panel then suddenly it hits. So then when you reread it, you see the weather is uh, actually becoming worse and worse without anyone noticing. I would yeah. like to do that. It's something it like good. with camera angles and framing too, it's mm-hmm. the kind of thing that the reader is taking in, but they're not realizing it, right? They're mm-hmm. looking at characters mm-hmm. and they're reading dialogue and they're following the story. And this other stuff, this texture is like having an effect, hopefully mm-hmm. this atmosphere and it's kind of working on them in a subtler kind of way. Yes. Um, yeah. For example, wind picking up. They are talking outside, and then as they talk, their, their hair is more and more uh, uh, moving, the wind, until it becomes... Yeah. yeah. For example. You know, things that are gradual. Usually, usually weather worsens gradually. Usually, 
not often, not always, but usually. So yeah. that would work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, you can you can slowly, like you were saying before, Baines. Um, you know, showing uh, things darkening suddenly. Yeah, like the shadows dark. are getting stronger or longer, and they're or disappearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's changes or disappearing. Yeah. Yeah. It indicates. Oh, there's um, no light source. <laughs> I like a cutaway panel. It depends on obviously it depends on the specifics of your story and of your scene and stuff. But a cutaway panel of like you know, the fallen tree or the whatever, the, the blaring sun or whatever it is, some kind of effect of the weather. As characters are talking, you have that cutaway panel where the dialogue continues, but you have this, you know, you take your focus off the characters here and there and show that kind of thing. I've seen that done a lot. Mm. Yeah. That's handy. You know, you can keep things, keep things moving, but uh, you can sort of show what's going on and even call a little attention to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I... Yeah, it's a, it's cool. I mean, there's so many ways to do it. You have to dialogue so over neat. the top of like a bare panel that just shows you know, environmental effects, leaves blowing in the wind or something. Yeah, and of course you have your character's behavior itself, right? You have like a bead of sweat, or you have like putting on extra clothes, or mm -hmm. yeah. wringing out a wet. Uh, sock or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Well, a typical <laughs> thing would be jumping out a boot. Shivering yeah. or um, like a crossing the arms like this, that kind of yeah. thing. So that indicates yeah. cold. So you, you've got your arms crossed over your chest, holding your shoulders, hunching in with your going down on the neck like this kind of thing. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, like throwing your, your clothes basically. Mm. Wrapping cold And that's in. adding to the sort of like weather as sort of a, a vague kind of atmos atmosphere, like a... You guys were talking, were saying earlier how like rain can mean different things to different people. Possibly, mm. you know, some people like it, and you know, dusk the same thing, you know. But if you can add on to your weather with the character's behavior and your camera angles to sort of bolster what what you're going for, like, is it a more comedic thing? Is it a, an oppressive weather? Is it a an isolated kind of feeling you're going for? Like, you you use that kind of stuff, behavior and angles. And everything, um, mm -hmm. where your camera's placed, and all that to sort of add to that, uh, whatever tone you're trying to do. Yeah, so, one of the really effective things are just shots of the sky, clouds. Yeah. So you can have barely any ground or no ground at all, and just show the clouds. That could be so effective for not just for you know stormy weather, but for summer too. When you're showing that kind of stuff, you're showing like yeah. blue skies, hard sun. Hard yellow sun and just nice fluffy, fluffy clouds and the changes and the clouds as they move. That can be very yeah. effective. Mm -hmm. For for heat, you could have completely cloudless uh, sky with just the glow of the sun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I got that all through Pinky J in uh, chapter six. I've got uh, I do a lot yeah. of that. A lot of hard blue sky with no clouds. And yeah, just a white, glowing, yeah. evil sun up there. <laughs> Suffocating yeah. heat. Yeah. Endless. Precisely. It's very effective. And yeah, you have to. And one thing you said, Baines, about the, ah, um, oh, damn, I'm doing snow and I have to do, you know, people in uh, you know, coats and stuff like that. For me, when I was doing that chapter, it was just completely the same sort of thing. I was thinking, oh, God, I have to do like desert again. And the same yeah. damn brown colors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, people, like, yeah, the same like, sweaty clothes. And, but when I finished that, I didn't really know what I had when I had it because that makes it so easy because you've always got the same kind of palette to work with and the same kind of scenery, yeah. and you just get used to it, and it can make things so much easier. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Brave Resistance, uh, the whole thing with the snow, like painting snow, Game uh, almost uh, a natural process. Yeah. And need to think about how to paint snow anymore. Yeah. Had the process and, and it just happened. And the great thing about snow and in that kind of environment, cold, is that you can really ramp up the atmospheric perspective, which means you know you can hide 
stuff that's close, like trees and buildings, in just mm -hmm. the fuzziness of the air. So yeah, you can you can have visibility being really poor, which means you don't have to draw much background because that's appropriate to the kind yeah. of thing yeah. that you're going for. One thing with snow, though, and I have to say that is that if you want to go for relatively realistic snow physics, quote unquote, you have to draw at least the line work of what the snow is going to be sitting on, uh, because otherwise it would look a little fake. It's a sausage made of snow, and wow. for example, when I was painting. Um, is often I will work with a uh, face on brave resistances that she creates the foreground with line work, but all the background I make just by painting. So a lot of the snow and snow dim trees had to paint from scratch without any line work to work with. So I had to first paint the, the pines and know where the branches were. These branches were going to be lowered more by the weight of the, of the snow and, and how. And then I went over on, an, on a different separate, separate layer and uh, painted the snow over it. Okay. Knowing that, okay, here it is, it is leaning, it is being weighed down, so now I'm going to paint uh, more snow on it, and it's going to have more of a of a mass yeah. to it. It's going to be more of um, like there will be more bluish shadows around it. Uh, it will look a little darker than you know the, the super fluffy new snow that is on top okay. and things like. That. Yeah, uh, you have to know what is underneath the snow. More or less, how you have to know how the body is underneath the coat. Yeah, yeah, because it, uh, it changes the contours. Snow is quite difficult for um, lying on things. It's, it's tricky because yeah, it banks up onto itself. But what if you you know something that's used a lot, like a road or something like mm -hmm. that? People will um, you know have pushed it aside. In certain ways, and that's going to be change it or snow on a building or a vehicle. So yeah, it's, it can be tricky in that way. You can't really um take it for you know for granted and be too laissez-faire about it. But it, it is good for like uh, blocking out stuff in the distance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it can make it very atmospheric. But uh, definitely, when painting snow, know what is underneath it. Yeah, yeah it's going to change things quite differently, unless it's like ridiculous blizzard and everything's hidden and it's just all blobs. <laughs> okay. but even then, you have to have like some impression of who is underneath, so the blob is going to be more or less uh, very vaguely shaped, like whatever it is underneath. Yeah. Uh, it really is, I, it's like a blanket, usually. It's like a, a like treat it as a blanket. Hmm. That is falling places. The blanket of snow, quite literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it yeah, humps up over things. So yes, yeah, snow is a very very interesting thing um rain is actually not that easy to draw rain can pose challenges because like are you going to draw every little drip like are you going to draw mm. them as well we never draw them as dots we always draw them as trailing in some way unless uh, you are at zero gravity then they will yeah <laughs> it won't be rain, it'll be a cloud of water. You'll be in a cloud. But um yeah, so rain is tricky. A lot of the time we will draw them as lines, which is how you see rain or how you think of it, how the brain, you know, um mm -hmm. interprets it. That's a good way of doing it, I think. That's tends to work. Mm -hmm. Rain as lines. You can yeah, also you can like... draw it where it's pooling and where it's dripping, you can have certain little areas of that if that's what you're after, yeah. 
often, often yeah. rain is uh, even in real life invisible, oh, yeah. except where it's uh, it's, uh, flashing against you know the ground and and uh, umbrellas and the uh, windows. So, so you don't actually need necessarily to the actual rain, and that will also cover your art. But you can draw where it lands and have things drip. Yeah. Hmm. Stuff like Ben said. It depends on the effect uh, you're going for, doesn't it? Unless it is so heavy. Like the splash effect on metal and on hard surfaces. Yes, exactly. Everything is shiny because it, uh, it is wet. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, uh, the one thing I just wanted to mention is that unless the rain, you intend the rain to be so heavy that people you cannot see, like visibility is very low, and then you can draw it with perspective, quote unquote. Like mm-hmm. in the background, you draw the rain because it is so thick that it is uh, hiding everything. And then as you move on to the foreground, you you paint or draw less and less of it so that you can have your scene. Yeah, which is right. quite difficult to achieve. That is a tricky thing, which is why a lot of us don't do that for many scenes. Yeah. Um, the other day that happened here, uh, it was ridiculous, torrential rainfall. Just for a very short time, this is what happens in my city. We have rain that just goes plummets down from the sky and then disappears and it was quite an unusual effect so you'd see like huge you know drops uh flows of water from the sky just blocking out everything and it's terrifying as well and that's a it's an interesting thing if you want to include that in your comic like the um the uneasiness you feel from weather just behaving in such a violent manner Well, um, we're like reached uh, past an hour, so we should wrap this up, shouldn't we? The uh, the weather as not a character, because with this we're not what we're talking about, but the weather as something that affects your characters and affects your story. The weather as, as an enhancer, yes, an enhancer, an active participant as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, environmental hazard. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have talked about the weather. On the next uh, podcast, we will talk about our health. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Yes, don't get me started. Oh, I've had this cough and it just won't go. It's pain in my foot. No, okay. Well, that's what we'll talk about. <laughs> Let's not talk about your health. <laughs> old old biddies chatting about our. Health. All right. Thank you very much for listening to the uh, Quack House Quack House number 349. No, 439. Sorry. Oh, oh. Exactly. Awesome. I lost 100 there. Okay. We're almost up to 439. So we're almost up to 440. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. Okay. Just don't stop. 500. We'll have to plan a special something for that when it comes. I guess that's about yeah. a couple of years away, actually. <laughs> But still, oh, uh, that, that'll be next year. We, month. we, month. Yeah. we will throw a party. Yay! Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we will party like it's 1999. And speaking of Prince, Purple Rain. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <beautiful>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye bye, people. Bye bye. Bye.